Hey everybody, it's Greg. How's it going? So today I'm going to review the Applied Data Science with Python specialization from the University of Michigan. So gain new insights into your data, learn to apply data science methods and techniques, and acquire analysis skills. Pretty broad sentiment about data science. We'll have to look into that. 4.5 star rating on 24,000 ratings is enough to definitely say like the people like it for sure. Uh, the instructors, I'm not going to click on them. I don't find it uh, to be super noteworthy, although they're absolutely very smart people uh, that, that are able to explain things well and know what they're talking about. Okay, so lots of people enrolled already. What you will learn, conduct an inferential statistical analysis. We'll see if they use the word inferential statistics properly. Um, generally, it's associated with uh, confidence intervals and hypothesis testing. Um, they might mean that for machine learning. We'll take a look enhance a data analysis with applied machine learning. So I like how they're phrasing that, like you take data analytics and to take that a step further, you definitely should learn machine learning. That's what this course is gonna largely focus on, although they do uh, the, the analytic stuff as well. So discern whether a data visualization is good or bad. I find that to be kind of a funny skill. I would really just call it data visualization. They do down there. Uh, and analyze the connectivity of a social network. I would say that's probably the, the capstone project, project if I had to take a guess. So skills you will learn, text mining, good. I'm very glad that they talk about text here. Uh, and they actually have down here uh, NLTK, which is the Python natural language toolkit library. It's really, really good. Uh, and don't be scared of it if you've never worked with text. It's actually really easy. Uh, Python programming, pandas, matplotlib, numpy, so the common libraries. Data cleansing, data virtualization is kind of an interesting choice. I'm not sure what they mean by that. Data visualization, data is, I really hate that term. Um, ML algorithms, machine learning, scikit-learn. Okay, so you can see here it's analytics, Python libraries, uh, visualization, machine learning, no deep learning. You would have to do the TensorFlow courses or PyTorch stuff to get used to that. So over here, you should see that it is intermediate level. Um, that is important. So they kind of assume, note that they say skills you will gain Python programming. Yes, you will get better at pro, uh, Python programming, but it actually assumes that you've done pretty much the equivalent or exactly the, uh, the Python for everybody specialization. Uh, if you're familiar with that, basically it's just an introduction to Python. Make sure you know like uh, for loops uh, and if statements, that type of thing. Uh, and then you're ready to take this course, I, I would probably say. So about this specialization, I won't read this whole thing, uh, but basically it's for learners who have a basic Python or programming background. So if you've only done a different language, uh, you can probably jump into this, although I'd still probably learn Python first. Um, and you want to learn statistical machine learning, I don't know, information visualization, I said that badly. Information visualization is a kind of a weird term. Text analysis and you know, probably a capstone project through the popular libraries. So basically all it's saying is that for those people uh, that want to take Python and learn about analytics, you're good to go. Uh, so introduction to data science in Python is the first course. Uh, that's a long bunch of words, visualization, basically the course two. Uh, course three is then starting to use the more complicated libraries, probably scikit-learn in that course. We'll take a look. Uh, and so those three, what it's saying is that you have to, have to take that uh, you have to take course one, then course two, then course three. Uh, they should be taken in order and prior to any other course. But then after completing those, courses four and five can be taken in any order. I would just do the one to five though, probably fine. Okay, so let's take a look at the courses. So course one, Introduction to Data Science in Python. Uh, lots of ratings, you know, of course, a lot more than the second one. This course will introduce the learner to the basics of the Python programming environment, including fundamental Python programming techniques, such as lambdas, so just functions without a name, quick, quick functions, reading and manipulating CSV files, and NumPy. It will introduce data manipulation and cleaning techniques using pandas, and introduce the abstraction of series and data frame, that's just the, the data structures in pandas, uh, which are central uh, central data structures for data analysis, along with tutorials on how to use functions such as group by, merge, and pivot tables effectively. To be honest, uh, I'm very happy that they go through all of that. Uh, a lot of people will teach pandas, possibly me. I'm not. I don't remember. Um, without teaching these really really important topics like group by and merge, so that's that's great skills right there. Happy with course one for sure. 
Two, applied plotting, charting, and data representation in Python. This course will introduce the learner to information visualization basic basics with a focus on reporting and charting using the Matplotlib library. Okay, so doing different graphs in Matplotlib, pretty easy. Uh, the course will start with design and information literacy perspective. I don't really know what they mean by that. Uh, touching on what makes a good and bad visualization. Really just what makes a good visualization is if you understand what it's saying and if it provides value and it's mathematically found. So as long as it makes sense, I don't think there's any bad visualization. Um, but there is, of course, better ones. <laughs> uh, and what statistical measure measures translate into terms of visualizations? The second week will focus on the technology used to make visualizations in Python, uh, yeah, Matplotlib, and introduce users to best practices when creating basic charts and how to realize design decisions in the framework. This is a lot of words. I'm getting kind of annoyed by this. It's a lengthy topic. Now I'm talking a lot. <laughs> um, it's plotting in Matplotlib, pretty much. Uh, of course, it'll be more complicated than that, uh, but that's that's the idea for sure. Okay, uh, applied machine learning in Python, which is, uh, I really hope that you, uh, you know, get this skill. This course will introduce the learner to applied machine learning. So note that they are saying applied. It's, it's important, focusing more on the techniques and the methods than on the statistics. Okay, they're putting a lot more, they're showing you what you need and probably teach you some of the statistics so that you are actually able to make a model and make it useful. Uh, and you know, that's the important pieces. I still recommend that you go through the math at some point, um, but this is fine. This is a good perspective to go to. The course will start with a discussion of how machine learning is different than descriptive statistics. Basically, it's different than descriptive statistics because you're making a model, it's doing something. Uh, descriptive statistics, you might. Uh, and introduce scikit-learn through tutorial. Yeah, it'll use scikit-learn pretty much the whole time. The issue of dimensionality of data will be discussed. Very important. Uh, they're going to do clustering. It's very, very easy to do that in scikit-learn. Uh, and evaluating those clusters. Great. Uh, this is awesome. Uh, supervised approaches for creating predictive models will be described, and learners will be able to apply the scikit-learn predictive modeling methods while understanding process issues related to data generalizability. So they do talk about cross-validation and overfitting. Uh, zone out most of those words there. Cross-validation and overfitting, really, really, really important topics, so make sure you understand that. Uh, the course will end with a look at more advanced techniques, such as building ensembles and practical limitations of predictive models. Okay, so yeah, th this is really important. Ensembles, you know, it's good to learn. You may or may not use it. Practical limitations of predictive models. A lot of people don't understand like how far these things actually go. You know, there's so much hype in AI and machine learning and you need to understand that it only goes so far. Um, by the end of this course, students will be able to identify the difference between a supervised classification and an unsupervised clustering technique. Yes, please. <laughs> I, I hope that you can. Uh, if you can't, then, you know, it's really simple, actually. It's just that supervised learning, you're given the class output, uh, cl clustering or unsupervised, you're not given some sort of output. That's really the difference. Uh, identify which technique they need to apply for a particular data set and need. Engineer features to meet that need. Interesting. I'm actually curious. I probably won't take this specific course, um, but I'm curious how far they go into engineer features uh, to meet their needs. It's a tricky topic. You can make it easy, but um, you can do some really clever feature engineering to better uh, enhance machine learning models. Okay, uh, so course four, applied text mining in Python. I'm so happy that they go through text. It will introduce the learner to text mining and text manipulation. Um, the course begins with an understanding of how text is handled by Python, the structure of text both to the machine and to humans, and an overview of the NLTK framework for manipulating text. I love this, so happy about that. Second week focuses on common manipulation needs, including regular expressions, searching for text, yep, that's important, cleaning and preparing for use by machine learning processes. So, so important. It's not nearly as hard as people think it is. It's like, how do you turn text into a computer? Well, we'll tell you that. Basically, you can either count words uh, or you can think of words as a vector. That's really the, the two main options. Uh, the final week, we'll explore more advanced options for detecting the topics and documents and grouping them by similarity through topic modeling. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And of course, uh, social network analysis, they're going to do um, some sort of a, a 
capstone project, the course will introduce the learner to network analysis through tutorials using the network X library. To be honest, I have no idea what that is. Um, but obviously for social networks, for graphing, uh, basically graphing as in, uh, not graphing like course two graphing, graphing, like I have this point here, I'm connected to these people. Those people are all connected to people through what's called a graph. Okay, uh, I'm not going to read that because it's just a capstone project. Uh, they're describing what you'll be doing with that. But wonderful. Okay, so you know, I think it's great. Uh, wonderful specialization. Um, I, I, I am kind of annoyed that they use the word inferential statistical analysis, because I didn't see the words confidence interval or hypothesis test pop up. Um, if they do, then sure, but that's a uh, that's very, very commonly what we mean by inferential analysis. Machine learning is really more about making models and not caring too much about the interpretability or estimation of coefficients, whereas uh, this stuff is very important for that. Um, but other than that really tiny just annoyance with me, you know, it's great. Uh, definitely recommend uh, taking this on. Uh, do I recommend it over the IBM, which is really the other option? I, I haven't taken this one in particular, so I can't really say, but I can say that I think it would be a really good option. And I, I would encourage anyone to take a look if you're interested. All you need to know is Python skills and uh, you, you're good to go. Okay, um, so if you're not subscribed to the channel, then take a look at some of my videos, see uh, see if they're interesting to you uh, and you'd like to stay up to date. Subscribe if you are. And uh, yeah, I'll see you later, guys. Thanks so much.